Lilburn Boggs and Brigham Young conspired to assassinate Joseph Smith and destroy the Nauvoo Mormons. Yes, Lilburn Boggs, who signed the extermination order when he was governor of Missouri, was in constant contact with Brigham Young, and their intermediary was John D. Lee, who fully discloses their connection in Mormonism Unveiled, the autobiography of John D. Lee. He wrote shortly before his assassination or execution for the Mountain Meadow Massacre, John D. Lee. He was the adopted son of Little Burn Boggs and then the adopted son of Brigham Young, both of whom conspired to assassinate Joseph Smith and destroy the Mormon Nauvoo anti-slavery movement. So listen to me while I identify right in John D. Lee's autobiography, Mormonism Unveil. You can turn to chapter 2, page 44. Right there, you will see that John D. Lee's famous autobiography identifies his first mentor and patron, Lilla Byrne Boggs. And what is remarkable about this is their first meeting between John D. Lee and Lilla Byrne Boggs occurred right outside of Commerce on the Mississippi River. Commerce, which was going to be the Mormon homeland of Nauvoo for Joseph Smith and approximately five to ten years after John D. Lee first met Lilburn Boggs just outside of Nauvoo Commerce, Illinois and was employed and adopted by Lilburn Boggs and went up to Galena, Missouri and there worked for Lilburn Boggs who eventually Lilburn Boggs sent John D. Lee down to Brigham Young who also adopted the orphan John D. Lee as his adopted son. Oh my goodness, such traitors and such, such and so much manipulation of orphans. These are what we call the orphan trains or children that are adopted for nefarious purposes by very evil men. So in this chapter, I will refer you to it, but just to let you know that Brigham Young was known throughout the U.S. as an evil villain. In fact, Brigham Young, under threat of prosecution for murdering and counterfeiting, was thrown out of the United States by Stephen A. Douglas himself, best friend and colleague of Joseph Smith. Now remember, Brigham Young was well known for a slew of murders that occurred in Nauvoo right after Joseph Smith's assassination, many of them being very famous. But one of them uh, indeed was an old um, colonel that was a, a war hero in which Mormons invaded his property and killed him on the spot. These Mormon Danites were ruthless and employed mafia-type tactics. John D. Lee, in his autobiography, identifies how they would dig graves in anticipation of getting a target person drunk and then take him out to the grave site and then throw him in the grave with the hope of whiskey at the bottom of the grave, and then they'd cover him up and bury him alive. Other tactics that these Danites, Brigham Young assassins would use is to take their victims out into the Mississippi on boats, then um, basically disembowel them like you see in the temple ceremony, and then throw them in the river where they would sink because of being disemboweled. These were horrific ways of murdering your enemies. But Brigham Young was most famous when he arrived in Utah for his blood atonement ritual. And when I engage with certain, I guess, Mormon men who think blood atonement's just wonderful, they try and defend it. Let me tell you what blood atonement is. 
Blood atonement is a ritual which involves vampirism or drinking of the blood and cannibalism. Blood atonement is the ancient superstitious belief by the Roman soldiers at Carthage or other areas of a holocaust is that in order to fully and completely destroy your enemy you had to eat them and consume them so you not only destroyed their bodies but you consumed their souls and turned them into excrement this is Brigham Young's blood atonement belief and one that is endorsed by the Utah Church even to this day they say it's not but they still do these rituals in the temple ceremonies even though the public has been um, sanitized of them but at the blood atonement rituals that were done in the temple even as late as the 70s and 80s in John D Lee's biography John D Lee was adopted first by Lilburn Boggs and then by Brigham Young Lilburn Boggs adopted John D Lee employed him at his mercantile store in Galena this is the mercantile store which down the Mississippi I believe they transported guns to overthrow Nauvoo and they transported them through I believe Bishop Partridge whose daughters the Partridge sisters I believe were interracial because if you read in their autobiographies they were severely mistreated they don't remember their childhood and uh, the Partridges were confined on their riverboat to the slave quarters or the interracial quarters on the boat while their father uh, Dr. Partridge was or Bishop Partridge was allowed to roam free uh, for with the free white people on the riverboat indicating that much to the Mormon deception their slaves they would call them children or adopted children in order just to own slaves in the free states so and then also uh, during this uh, fugitive slave laws if anybody looked interracial you could kidnap them and call them your slave or call them your child and if they're young enough what are the, these children going to know they're only going to know that they're mistreated by a very evil father well their mutually adopted son was John D. Lee, an orphan. John D. Lee was adopted first by Lilburn Boggs in Commerce, Illinois, where he, which would eventually become Nauvoo. And then after he raised and got the loyalty of John D. Lee, he sent John D. Lee down to Brigham Young's community in Missouri to become a Mormon he baptized Mormon and to be inducted into the secret society of the Danite assassins John D Lee documents how he was inducted into the secret society of the Danites and they were given certain signals in order to um, recognize each other and even get this everyone everyone wants to know where the Mormon garment comes from John D Lee documents in his autobiography they were given the documents they were underwear but they had Masonic symbols on them so that when in their false flags at the voting booth for example where good Mormons would pretend to be attacking Missourians and then they would fight each other out and cause a, a insurrection well then you could open up your shirt and reveal your undergarments with the Masonic symbols this is where this false notion or mythology comes from that you must always wear your garments and God which is according to John D Lee Brigham Young called himself God in the Utah Empire where God himself would protect you as long as you were wearing your garments to show that you were a traitor <laughs> that you were part of the false flag and that um, was at the voting booth in Gallatin that's documented in John D Lee's autobiography that the voting booth at Gallatin was also a false flag and that he was lying in the bushes and that he got involved in the fisticuffs I think they were using sticks of some sort 
just hitting each other with sticks, but that most of the of the insurrection that occurred at the voting booth were all done by these um, secret Mormons. None of them were done by the Missourians. In fact, that is what a false flag is. John D. Lee acted like a Mormon, but he said the Missourians were actually Mormons and he recognized them because he actually tried to hit one of the Missourians and the Missourians flashed him one of his symbols to show that he was a Mormon. And the, according to John D. Lee, the symbol that they used besides their Mormon garments was uh, putting cupping their either their right or their left ear with their thumb and their hand, cupping the outside the earlobe and then brushing it down the face. So that was a sign besides all the handshake signs that Masons engage in in order to determine ge <laughs> genetics. That's what the fingers uh, on the hands are all about, is if you have a double jointed thumb or you have a single jointed thumb. That is genetics back to the Nephilim, they say the pre-Adamic race, and then the subsequent race born out of Eve and Satan or Lucifer out of the Bible. Eve was always a tormented soul. The Romans hated Eve and, well, women, and destroyed women in the temples in order to destroy the female influence throughout religious and scientific history, and they've done a fairly good job because most women are enslaved in most religious, Abrahamic religions at least. You will find the women enslaved. So anyway, in his book, John D. Lee recalls how little burn bugs which he identifies as William Boggs, B-O-G-G-E-S. But this is Lil Burn Boggs, just spelled a different way. Lil Burn Boggs is William, middle name was William Boggs, and he owned a mercantile store in Galena. Now, according to this chapter 2, page 44, you will see how Lee is adopted first by Boggs, but also involved is Lil Bernbog's wife, who happened to be the daughter of the famous Kentuckian Davy Crockett. Yes, Davy Crockett, that pro-slavery uh, confederate. I know he's been vaunted by Walt Disney as being a hero, but Davy Crockett was a traitor and a confederate and pro-slavery advocate and was responsible not only for the fiasco at the Alamo, but trying to turn Texas into a slave state. That's Lil Burn Boggs and Davy Crockett's daughter also trying to spread all the misery of slavery throughout the United States and which was being fought by the Mormons.